Hey, this guide is gonna help you improve in StarCraft 2 at a very quick rate, and it will positively transform your progress in just one hour or whatever time it's gonna take me to record this. I'll explain some of the crucial mistakes that prevent you from achieving Grandmaster League, or at least getting a promotion and extra hundreds of MMR in your own league. If you really want this video to have an effect, make sure to pay attention and watch it in order from the beginning until the end. The goal of this guide is to show you an achievable and reasonably easy road to success in StarCraft 2. This guide is for those average, casual gamers who don't have 10 hours to play the game, but who really want to get better at what they love. This guide will challenge the beliefs you have about the game, but this is a method that I used to master this game in a quick time with not too much effort. It's a perfect roadmap you need, and I share this knowledge with dozens of other people, and I have always seen a decent progress, from just 100 to 200 MMR points up to 1000, and some guys were even able to break out from Diamond League and reach Grandmaster in a couple of months. I must warn you that this is gonna be a controversial video. I've seen countless guides and lessons about StarCraft 2, but they were mostly covering either the basics or to exact details that are very niche and not found in every match you play. Sometimes you could find useful advice in one video, then in another, sometimes those pieces would contradict themselves, and so on. And actually, many pieces of advice that I found online were not even applicable to me, and I couldn't really see any results after implementing them. So I have always longed for a full guide that would introduce me to the game and form the right mindset on how to progress in it in the quickest possible fashion. Since I haven't been satisfied with my search, I have decided to create my own full guide to help those who want to get a clear picture and a fast growth in StarCraft 2. Before we proceed, let me give you my story. You might know me as the author of eSports Storyteller, but I also used to be a Grandmaster player under the nickname Bassett. And to tell the truth, I'm a freaking terrible player, seriously. I always sucked at playing like most other people do, or like most people suggest you to play and, you know, how you should play, how you're supposed to play this game. Because my hands aren't as flexible and my fingers are kinda made of wood. I really struggle in my real life with most mechanical things that normal people do every day. And it's really shameful to admit, but I even had issues with my shoelaces until I was 18 years old. So you can imagine that my micro control was god awful. And it was my weakest side in StarCraft 2. I don't even really use hotkeys and control groups except for F2 and one hotkey for all my hatcheries. Nevertheless, starting from 2016, I have been a consistent Grandmaster Zerg player in Europe, with my MMR ranging from 5.6k MMR to my highest peak of about 6.5k MMR, which is closely related to top 40 or top 30 Grandmaster League in Europe, which is a really difficult region to play in. I even won some local tournaments and had some really nice matches against legendary players beating some of them as well. So even if I was able to reach and easily maintain my position in Grandmaster League, you're certainly capable of it as well, or even more. So in this guide I'll explain you how you can achieve a good level of playing StarCraft 2 without having a high APM, many control groups, a crazy micro control, and all other things that other guides require you to have. And we'll talk about things that are almost never mentioned in other guides, and I'll show you how with a small change of mindset and perspective you can start playing much much better. Again, I'll repeat that this guide might seem controversial to you and it will contradict many other approaches to learning StarCraft 2. But believe me, it works and just be open to what I say and try it yourself for a couple of weeks. You'll be surprised with the results you'll get. I tried this method in other similar games as well and with other people and it usually gives a huge boost to growth. So let's set our goal. We need to reach Grandmaster League, or at least High Masters, and preferably quickly. While doing so, we shouldn't exhaust ourselves and we should have some fun. Remember, it's a guide for an average slash casual player, not for somebody who is already a pro player, although you can probably find something useful here as well. And this is primarily the guide for success on ladder and reaching a Grandmaster League, not winning tournaments, as those are pretty different things and require different approaches and the amount of effort as well. Besides, we should achieve a high level of play by actually becoming a well-rounded, consistent player. And that means we won't do that by cannon rushing, proxy regs or other cheesies and dirty strategies. In other words, we'll play mostly macro and we'll try to be consistent and bulletproof against all strategies in StarCraft 2. 
This guide is split into many lessons and you can start from any point, but I would recommend you to go step by step, because that's how I plan this stuff to work. And it works for all three races, but since my experience is tied to the Zerg race, all this advice work best for it especially. So the first lesson is plans and habits. And let's be honest, you heard that phrase, you know, have a plan quite a lot. Probably every content creator and StarCraft 2 coach spoke about it. The problem though, everyone is doing that in a wrong way. And when people say I have a plan, it usually means I just have a build order to stick to it. And while it's indeed necessary to know what you do, there is a lot more to it. This is probably the most boring lesson, but this is also the one that will help you skyrocket your progress in StarCraft 2. Together with me, imagine a big tree rising up to the skies. Its trunk is tall and wide, but it also has many branches and small twigs that grow out of it in all directions. Your starting basic build order is your trunk. This is something that you do constantly every game, and it's relevant usually for the first 5 to 7 minutes of each matchup. Your goal is to create an algorithm that could answer all the questions that might arise during your ladder session. In other words, you should know exactly what to do, when to do and how to do it. Why do you often see yourself floating resources, being hesitant or just lacking initiative in the game? Well, that's because you don't actually know what to do. Most players have a build order that helps them get through the first couple of minutes, and they have a really vague understanding of what army composition they should build and how to actually break their enemy. The secret here is quite simple and very obvious. It's even kind of boring to speak about it, but it's something I desperately need to acknowledge. Picture yourself playing a guitar. When you first learn it, you kind of look directly at it, learn the strings and see how your fingers move. It's pretty hard to do anything else besides it, and your attention is 100% occupied by that learning process. But a great musician doesn't need his visual clues to play guitar in a great fashion. He can sing, run around the scene while simultaneously hitting all the right chords and notes. Your goal is to ingrain those automatic habits into your brain. This is quite tiresome, and it's the only real hard work that you'll have to do in this guide. And this is also something that you'll have to do yourself, because, well, I just cannot simply put all the knowledge about every in-game situation and every build order in the one single guide. I'll, of course, make more in the future, but for now on, take a pen and a piece of paper, or open Microsoft Word or any other thing where you can store your information. Then your goal is to write down all the in-game situations and all responses to them. This might sound really overbearing, but it will only take you one or two hours now, and maybe you'll update that later on, but this will benefit you in the future and you'll avoid a lot of losses. What should I write? Well, take a basic example. For example, it's a Twilight Council and Robo in ZVP, and you can see there is an upgrade being produced, so this is probably gonna be adapts with Glaives. You need to know the best response to it. This means you need to know exactly how much drones should I have before I start producing my army. How much army do I actually need? How should I position my army and what's the goal of my defense? And how should I transition from that defense or attack? I know this is really freaking boring and you're probably gonna be resist doing that, but that's just how most players in Grandmaster League play. We don't really think about stuff like this. It's a no-brainer for us, a habit that we just reinforce every time we see a familiar situation. Most casual players, on the other hand, contemplate the situation for far too long and miss the crucial timings, or they simply have a wrong solution that has been implanted into their minds sometime before. And it doesn't come down only to early game or the first 7 or 8 minutes. You need to have a clear picture about each game you have, and you need to work on your decision making throughout the match. This is why I strongly advocate for learning only one all-round macro build order for all three matchups. You'll learn quickly the proper responses to the game and you'll be unstoppable compared to your peers on the same level, who waste time learning 10 different build orders with hundreds and thousands of subsequent game situations and things they'll need to learn and adjust to their 10 build orders, which obviously means that that's a lot more work to do. And I know it sounds cheesy, but take this Bruce Lee quote. It's not about the variety of strategies, but mostly about the perfect execution of at least one of them. And no, it doesn't mean your games are gonna be boring and all the same. You'll still encounter dozens of situations and you'll have to face a lot of different build orders and in-game situations. 
mostly from other players, obviously. It's just that your core playstyle and your core build order will remain the same, only adjusting to what's happening on the battlefield. One time you might play Roaches, next time you'll play Mutas because the situation requires it, and so on. You'll be flexible, but you need this, you know, core muscle, let's call it that way, to be really consistent and strong in this game. Lesson 2. Better less than more. And there's a common belief that uh, the more you do, the better you play, or you have more success in life, and so on. Well, I think it's actually the contrary. Imagine you start dancing, singing, writing a book, and doing martial arts while also working for three different companies and starting your own business. Would you be successful? Well, I think not. But what if you dedicated all those hours into one thing, or maybe like two things? As an example, most TVZ games start with one Reaper that goes across the map for scouting. While doing so, he's tempted to engage with Lynx and drones, hoping to do some damage. Sometimes you might even get a drone or two, but more often you'll get resources in the bank and the supply block. The same logic applies to StarCraft 2. Take a look at this picture. Those arrows are pulling you into different sides, but the impact and length of each arrow isn't that great. But if we restructure this thing and put more emphasis on certain key points of the game, we can have a substantial improvement. Human brain can only focus on one thing, and it's crucial for us to get our priorities straight. There is such thing as the Pareto Principle. 20% of work gets 80% of results, and this applies to StarCraft 2 as well. In most situations, doing less is better than doing more. Even players in Grandmaster League fail with doing everything at once, so you shouldn't really hope to catch up with everything. So here is the pyramid of needs for StarCraft 2 adjusted for the Zerg race. You might disagree with this point, and of course this pyramid will be different for some scenarios, but this is not the main argument. The point is, this is what most players have as a pyramid. Honestly, this is not even a freaking pyramid at this point. This is garbage. In 80% of situations, your attention should be focused at your own base and macro. This is specifically important for the Zerg players, as there is a lot of things to do. And yes, I know that scouting being solo might be super controversial to you, but we'll cover that later on. So, in general, don't bother yourself with trying to micro every link. You don't need to squeeze 100% results from every unit, and it's just counterproductive. This is especially true for non-Grandmaster players, as there are many things to do in the game and you'll never be able to do everything at once. Just pick what matters the most. If you don't believe me, create a lobby with unit tester and ask your less skilled friend to join a test with you. Give yourself 8 stalkers with blink, and give your friend twice the number. Then try to win that fight. You can even ask your friend not to micro the army at all, and you'll see that there is only so much you can do. The quantity always wins over quality in most macro games, unless this is a specific cheese or an early game all-in. Also, while doing your fancy micro, you'll probably forget about other things like spreading creep, sending mules or even building stuff. Even pro players miss out on that. Sure thing, there will be situations in the game when your micro control is more important than multitasking and economy. But take an actionable step right now for this part of the guide. Find and open a macro game and check the replay from your perspective. Follow your camera and see what you do and how you do. How you allocate your attention and how long it takes you to switch between tasks. You'll instantly see a lot of questionable decisions, I guarantee you that. You'll often hear the advice that it's good to learn multiple build orders for each matchup. Wrong. You don't need an arsenal of half-baked strategies and you don't need to invent something new every game. Remember the arrows picture. It's better to master a few things than to be mediocre at everything. If you really want to achieve Grandmaster League as fast as possible and still be a skilled and versatile player, you just need to add extra branches and tweaks to your core trunk that we discussed uh, in rule number one. You don't need cheeses and all-ins because on ladder you normally won't face the same opponents twice, well at least until Grandmaster League. And unless you play team leagues or tournaments, one good strategy will be enough. Lesson 3. Opportunity costs. Somewhere in the Gold League you'll often see the situation. A Protoss player sees a coming push and he hastily prepares his defenses. Everything goes to the front line. Units, batteries, cannons, extra wall and whatnot. Eventually Protoss player counters the push, but 5 minutes later he finds himself in a situation with 10 times smaller economy and, as a result, 
10 times smaller army for the next fight. So remember the rule of alternative costs. Not only do you lose your advantage when you don't build something, it also happens when you build something that's not needed in the situation. Every extra zealot or other fighting unit you make could be a new upgrade for the whole army or just some spare money for new probes, drones and all other useful stuff. So you need to try to never build extra of anything, even if it makes you feel safer. This is usually a wrong thing to do. Your goal is to have the golden mean when it comes to everything. If you can counter an enemy's cheese with 20 links, why would you need 40? Instead, build 10 drones and get yourself even further ahead. It could be very difficult to think ahead in StarCraft 2 since the game is pretty fast and your decision making is always challenged with different tasks. And to make things even worse, in most games we don't have full information about what's going on and we can only guess what our opponent has prepared for us. Very often this problem arises with overcommitment to something. When we see six Hellions driving on our creep, our immediate reaction is to amass zero links to defend the mineral lines. But if you watch pro players, they often make just a handful of zero links, sometimes not even enough to counter Hellions if they decided to go on. Why? Well, here's the deal. StarCraft 2 is a game with limited information. Your opponent doesn't know the exact amount of economy and forces at your disposal. Committing less for defense allows you to commit more to economy or attacking, giving you better chances in the mid game. Unfortunately, you never know the intentions of your opponent and this can backfire quite badly. But you still can calculate the exact minimum amount of forces or economy needed for each in-game situation. Opportunity costs is a pretty basic concept for every RTS game you play. Your goal is to optimize your spending as much as you can. Ask yourself, why do you overspend? Probably because you don't really know how much stuff on average you need to counter this and that. You just don't have a plan and you can go back to lesson 1 to learn that. And this issue was solved exactly there. And you just need to get these habits and you need to get used to it. Lesson 4. Greedy save cheese. I once had an aha moment when it struck me that every game of StarCraft 2 is a complicated version of Rock Caesar Papers. That's the first big realization I had about it, and this secret helped me make a clear picture in my head that massively improved my decision-making process. In this chapter, we'll talk about mind games and how to utilize them on a basic level. This is also relevant to the previous lesson about costs and cutting corners. There are three ways to play StarCraft 2. Cheesing means that you are trying to win by committing all your resources and attention to one attack. Sometimes you can divert your attention and strategy, but it will only work if you do some serious level of damage. Greedy means that you go all in on your economy and tech until you hit a desired number of workers or amount of bases. While doing so, you cut expenses on everything else, mostly on your fighting units and even scouting to some extent. Safe means that you go through a period of uncertainty when you try to discover your opponent's intention and you invest a considerable amount of resources and attention into defense and scouting, while also growing your economy and taking at a slower pace. As you can easily guess, each of these playstyles counters or loses to the other one. But what most people miss is that you don't need to play only one of them throughout the whole match. Here's how you can progress through safe greedy cheese in one match. Well, let's say you play ZVP. You start as normal, scout and see what your opponent does while expanding on free bases. The moment you see he's playing Stargate, uh, you turn on your greedy gear, because Stargate essentially means that there won't be any big threats except for oracles in the next two minutes. During that time, you build only drones and some essential upgrades. Well, let's say a quick layer. You don't build extra links for map control or extra queens, and after you hit 54 drones, you put down a Hydra Den and then cease drone production once and for all. From now on, you build only Hydras and Links. This used to be one of the strongest build orders in 2017 before Hydras were nerfed. The beauty of this strategy is that it's very complicated to scout and address early on, because the player switches instantly and behaves rather unpredictably. Such switches allow you to maximize your input of resources into one decision. If you keep on expanding economy, upgrading, taking and attacking at the same time, you are likely to fail somewhere. Either your army won't pack a punch, or you won't have a good enough economy to compensate for future trades. So the key to get good at StarCraft 2 is to be able to shuffle these three things in the right order. 
For 99 players in any league, this is the main problem that prevents you from hitting great timings and easily cutting corners against any opponent. What I often saw when I used to do coaching, most Zerg players would build a lot of useless units, like extra links, some extra roaches here and there, even ravagers and banelings just because they feel intimidated by their opponents. And it's actually a pretty big mistake, right? Since any investment prevents you from spending your money somewhere else and speeding up your game pace. The goal for you is to learn how to cut corners and adapt your build order appropriately. Again, we refer to the first lesson, you need to have that roadmap and you need to know all the responses that you should take and it will take some time for you to make this library of knowledge. But you need to keep in mind for now that these are not just blind risks, these are specifically calculated risks that you are willing to take based on your experience and knowledge. You should try to calculate a certain amount of drone slash army ratio for all possible situations. And most of it's well known and the numbers I mentioned above, they can be found anywhere. You can just open like a good StarCraft to coach like Pig or Nora, and you'll find quite a lot of useful stuff there. You can also practice making less units for defense. In ZVZ, for example, make 8 links and only 1 or 2 Bane links at 320. Then wait for your opponent's move and instead of morphing 6 Bane links straight away and possibly having them chill at your base until the end of the game. So like there is just no point in making like 8 Bane links if your opponent doesn't make any links. You probably get this, right? It's like a pretty basic logic. So you don't need to overcommit before you actually see that there is a sign that you need to invest money directly there. And pro players, of course, they kind of don't need to do that as much and they don't need to cut as many corners, since they have a lot of other advantages over you. They have better controls, multitasking, speed and many things. And they can even win without an extra couple of drones or something like that. They have uh, other advantages and they can compensate for that. Anyway, for you it will make things a lot easier. If you have the exact same micro as your opponent, but uh, having a 10% better economy or a 10% bigger army can be a really overwhelming advantage. You can probably object and say, well, if I risk too much, I lose games and I won't be a consistent player. Serol or Maru don't do that, they play safe, scout and yada yada yada. Yeah, it's fair enough, but you are not close to their level and where you can easily come back from every situation and have the full, complete knowledge of the game. Also, the way you play in tournaments is drastically different from the experience on ladder. Our goal is not to win tournaments at this moment, at this point. You are not a grandmaster yet, remember. Our goal is to optimize our skill and ladder growth. And that's why tournament playstyles could be irrelevant for us. It doesn't matter if we lose one game out of 10 just because we played too greedy. It's important that we win the rest 9 of them. Also, until Grandmaster League, your opponents will be mostly different. So there is no real way they'll memorize your weak points anyway. Lesson 5. Why scouting is overrated. Finally, we got to the juicy part. This is the most controversial aspect of this guide. And I'm sure I'll get a lot of shit in the comments for saying out loud things that, you know, kind of make sense if you think about them for some time. So prepare yourself for a very interesting discussion. Now, I don't say that scouting is completely useless or that you shouldn't scout. It's just that you don't always get a lot of useful clues from scouting, and sometimes scouting just makes things worse for you. I know it sounds ridiculous, but let me prove my point. First of all, scouting takes your attention, resources and effort to gather the information. We automatically consider the value of information we can get is somehow more valuable than extra economy, extra multitasking or like extra creep spread or just something else put in a different place. Well, this is usually true in some situations, it's not always the case. Why? There could be two moments when scouting doesn't really work. The first is very common, you kinda already know what you're looking for, right? It's either your gut feeling, or just because you have seen that 1000 times before. Most players in StarCraft 2 play roughly the same, we all follow certain build orders and pathways. It makes sense in terms of economy and just an overall progression of the game. If you see a Stargate, it's 99% chance that there will be an oracle soon. You don't need to do extra scouting to confirm that. There are just things that you can scout once and then forget about your opponent for 2 minutes because shifting from the build order he chooses will be simply more costly than sticking to it, even though his opponent is fully aware of his intentions. 
There is a counter argument. You can scout a Stargate, then it gets cancelled and replaced for a, let's say, Twilight all in attack. Well, this could be the case and such mind games are hard to identify unless you scout constantly. But remember, constant scouting means you lose time, resources, units and your brain points that you allocate to it. And yes, if you manage to scout something that was not planned, that's great, you're probably gonna win the game. But uh, in 9 out of 10 situations, it's gonna be the same. And people think scouting is somewhat free, but you forget about the opportunity costs and your brain points that you allocate to it. But the worst thing that happens with scouting is that the vast majority of players don't play logically, especially in low leagues. It's not like an insult, you know, but that's just how things go, right? A guy might put down the third base, then he all of a sudden flips the switch and goes for an SCV pool, and not because it was needed or it was good, but just because he wanted it. On higher levels it's called mind games, but in other leagues it's called YOLO. The difference is that in the Grandmaster League such things are, you know, somewhat calculated, as we discussed in Calculated Risks previously, while in other leagues such actions could have little thinking behind them. Unfortunately, your scouting can always compensate for other players' lack of logical cohesion or just weird decision making that, uh, you know, makes little sense overall. Of course, you might still play safe and be somewhat successful with it, but the other guy might not correspond to the clues you sent him. He might be doing dumb shit just because he chose to do it, no matter the consequences and risks. He just denies your freaking existence in this game. He is not cutting corners, he is cutting the freaking whole game out. And this is the type of player who places free targets only to build zero units from them while you are preparing your defenses and being super puzzled about it. So there is a pretty common case. Your product's opponent does zero scouting himself, takes his uh, 10 units across the map, well, let's say sentries and some immortals, zealots, whatever, and uh, he tries to do some damage. But his base is unprotected, even his wall is empty, nobody is standing there, but he just doesn't care. He can die from a single run by in a matter of seconds, and if you knew the game would be over, but you played it as if he had some force behind his strategy, and, you know, he would sit at home, you know, be logical about it, prepare the fences and move out only when it's reasonable to do so, and so on. But in the end, you just lose the game because the guy you, you were playing against, you just couldn't read your opponent and nothing really made sense to you. This is the tricky part about scouting. It doesn't always benefit you for two reasons. It's either already obvious, or you're still struggling with mind games and lack of logic in your opponents. And there are two ways to deal with that. The first is to minimize the scouting and do it only when necessary, on big timing and turning points. You try to replace it either with the sheer power of your multitasking and economy and army that can handle anything thanks to this economy, or you take initiative and go for any kind of aggression, harassment, pushouts that can both do damage and give you some information. And this is how a lot of Korean pro players like to play this game. There is a different, more safe European approach. You scout a lot and you base your actions on the input of information you get every 30 seconds, sacrificing some of your attention and resources for a reliable picture. As you can guess, I like the first approach way more. While in tournaments, the second option is, you know, safe and it kind of makes sense, but for ladder practice, it's better to focus on your macro and multitasking rather than scouting all the time for the reasons I mentioned above. Again, it's fine if we lose one game because we scouted poorly, but if we win the other nine games, who cares? Also, such limited information and scouting teaches you to extract the information from very limited clues, which, you know, helps you later on in your career when your scouting will be actually denied much more aggressively. Lesson 6. Learn how to engage. Okay, this is the easiest and most straightforward lesson here. It's very simple and you just need to do that every time you fight and your win rate will already grow significantly even if you ignore all other lessons in this guide. So, human's attention is severely limited, we already know that. We can only focus on one thing in a moment and thus it's increasingly complicated for us to handle multiple situations that require our direct, immediate attention. And this is why you should never engage in a direct fight without having a designated harass group or task force. You won't always win in a straight engagement, but you will always win games if you manage to hurt your opponent's economy. Every time you engage somewhere, try to do it simultaneously with other attack or something that diverts your opponent's attention. It works like magic. Send a war prism and then attack immediately. 
it's very likely that your opponent will either fail somewhere, either at the front line or at home. Make sure that you control the most important part of the grand scheme, and that's of course your main army. You don't really care as much about War Prism and how much damage it does. The goal is to destruct your opponent, not really to kill the economy. It's not like the main goal. It's, it's really good if it happens, but you know, you just need to distract him. And it's also very good if you can pre-plan such actions. The easiest way to do it is to use drops. It's quite easy to counter drops when your opponent has nothing else to do, but it gets increasingly difficult if there are multiple fronts being exposed. Just send a shift command war prism with shift command unload on target and try to strike at the same time as your war prism hits the base. And same is true for liberators, zerg overload drops, run buys and all other things. This is super powerful because even if your main attack fails, you get a health in economy, which in turn will make you fight easier in the next fight. Your opponent will just not have the same army, right? It will be just less. Repeat until you eventually win the game. Even if your opponent uh, starts to counter that, he still needs to commit resources to defense, which restricts his spending on the main army and other useful stuff. Lesson 7. Study other races and replays. Starting other races doesn't mean you need to go and play as them. It's a waste of time in my opinion, because you'll have to experience two other unnecessary matchups and you'll also need to hit the same level as your main race, which takes a significant portion of your time. And no, don't say that Rainer or Lambo play other races and they're kinda good with it. Well, guys, they're dedicating their lives to StarCraft 2. You're probably not, and your time is very limited. The best way to study other races is to take a look at replays and see where they have their weak and strong spots. You will be able to identify patterns that are common for all races. The timings when they have a certain amount of army and economy, and when they pose a threat to you or not. You probably also heard that you need to study your replays and look for mistakes. And honestly, I think it doesn't work. And not because it's a bad advice, uh, but because we are too lazy to do that. When we lose a game, we can naturally feel a bit irritated or angry and sometimes we just wanna get straight into it and start the next game immediately. Besides, you probably already know what went wrong. Most of the games, you know, it's kind of obvious. But what can be done instead? Well, instead you should look for things that you did great in this game, even if you lost it. Mention it to yourself and thank and praise yourself for doing that. This way you'll see the bright side of your progress, and from that point it's easy to move on to take a look at mistakes and other races. Just because you're already in the replay, why not do that, right? And this habit helps you reinforce the replay studies, because, well, there is always that positive feedback loop. Do the same for the games you win, just take a look at what you did best and then see where it maybe went wrong or what could be improved. It sounds kinda wishy-washy, but it does work. Well, at least for me. Lesson 8. Optimize your life for StarCraft 2. Well, it wouldn't be news if I said that your performance depends on the state of your mind and health. These are just quick tips if you want to get further ahead of other players and also get some new useful habits that help you way beyond StarCraft 2. Sleep a minimum of 8 hours. Ideally, you go to bed the same time every single day, even on weekends. I know it sounds unrealistic, but still, um, you kinda benefit from it quite a lot. Also, when people say sleep 8 hours, it means that you actually need more. You need time to fall asleep, and you need extra time to compensate for the moments when you wake up at night and go to the bathroom, or drink water, or whatever. Adding plus one extra hour really helps, so aim for nine hours of sleep actually. Don't overeat, especially carbs before playing. Playing with a full stomach results in worse decision-making process and sloppy reactions. Your body is just busy digesting food, and your brain doesn't function fully at these moments. And the same of course is true for any alcohol, but you know, that's kind of self-explanatory. Sport and exercises are generally great for the body and for the mind, so even little yoga or just, you know, at home 10 minute workouts, resistance training does help. Also, make sure to stand up every hour just to rest a bit, and it also improves your game performance quite a lot. Meditations can help you with focus on being in the zone, as pro athletes say. I never believed meditations actually work, but uh, they indeed do, and they help you with clarity and focus. But how to do them? Download an app called Medito, it's completely free, it's not a commercial or something, and the goal of meditation is to observe your breath. Every time your mind generates a random thought, just acknowledge that thought and focus on the breath again. It's just, you know, just like one push-up. 
you realize that there are dozens and hundreds of random thoughts that come and go through your mind at all the time, pretty much. Meditation helps you to stay present in many important situations when your undivided attention is required, and StarCraft 2 is one of such things. I remember I always struggled with that, even on tournaments I would be thinking about some random stuff, about like my girlfriend or my life or, you know, just absolutely irrelevant things when I'm playing like a freaking tournament, uh, I, you know, kinda need to win the money and just, you know, take the trophy, but I'm being absolutely distracted by random thoughts in my mind, even though like, you know, StarCraft 2 is a pretty complicated game, you need like a really great focus. So, in general, all things that uh, improve your focus, such as reading, can benefit you in StarCraft 2 as well. The last thing I'm gonna quickly address is multitasking and APM. I'm planning to make a separate guide on it, but you shouldn't stress too much about how fast you play. There were many pro players who had a really low APM compared to their teammates and opponents, and they were doing a great job on the pro level. APM increases gradually with practice, and your goal is not to hit the desired numbers, but to squeeze out as much as you can from the numbers you already have. Make those numbers really matter, turn that into a real impact in the game. It's not about 300 random clicks, it's about 80 or maybe 100 clicks that are done with a clear purpose and benefit your gameplay. So that's it for the whole guide, I hope it will help you on your journey to success. If you find that guide useful, please share that with your friends and other people and help me spread this knowledge. Subscribe to the channel for more useful guides and write your suggestions for future videos. Have a nice day and see you next time.